Russia's food safety agency, Roselhoznadzor, said this week it is considering a ban on Armenian dairy products after determining that some Armenian dairy producers were importing, quote, raw materials from Iran in breach of Armenia's commitments to the Eurasian Economic Union, a Russian-led trade bloc. In a statement, Rosel Hoznadzor also said its inspectors had found a number of health code violations during visits to Armenian dairy producers earlier this month. The agency added that it is in contact with its Armenian counterpart for, quote, consultations over the issue. Armenia's food safety inspection body responded a day later with its own statement, rejecting allegations of food safety issues but acknowledging the use of Iranian raw materials in some products. Quote, the problem that has come up is being discussed with the Russian side, the statement noted. While neither agency specified what raw materials Armenian dairy producers were importing from Iran, Armenian economy minister Vahan Karobyan told reporters this week that some firms in Armenia use Iranian cream in their products. Armenia exported about $32 million worth of dairy products last year, according to data from the country's statistical committee. The figures do not specify destination countries, but it is understood that the lion's share is sent to Russia. The potential ban comes as ties between Yerevan and Moscow continue to fray, most recently over Armenia's renewed moves last week to join the International Criminal Court, which issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin earlier this month over his conduct in Ukraine. Rosel Hoznadzor, the Russian food safety body, has long been accused of restricting trade as a means of political retaliation. To take just one example, in 2015, the agency banned the import of tomatoes from Turkey days after a Turkish fighter jet downed a Russian attack aircraft near the border with Syria, prompting a diplomatic crisis between Ankara and Moscow. At a cabinet meeting this week, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan announced his administration had set a goal of 7% economic growth this year, well above the central bank's forecasts. Quote, we must ensure at least 7% annual economic growth and we must consistently work in this direction, Pashinyan said, adding, we have formulated a strategic goal of increasing and expanding the degree of the diversification of our economy. Importantly, though, that figure is well above the Armenian Central Bank's forecasts. Earlier this month, bank head Martin Galstian said his team was expecting 5.8% growth, citing expected expansion in construction and services, as well as the Armenian government's controversial decision last month to revive the long-stalled Amalsar gold mine project. A number of international organizations are also forecasting growth rates substantially lower than Pashinyan's 7% target. The rating agency S&P, for instance, is predicting 4.6% growth, while the World Bank set its outlook even lower, at 4.1%. Last year, Armenia's gross domestic product grew by 12.6%, one of the highest annual expansion rates the country has recorded in the past three decades. That came on the back of soaring trade with Russia and massive inflows of Russian labor and capital in the form of some 100,000 migrants. Earlier this month, Economy Minister Vahan Karobyan told the Russian business daily Vietimosti that about a quarter of last year's growth could be attributed directly to the relocation of Russians to Armenia. The newly posted United States Ambassador to Armenia, Christina Kavin, pledged this week to reinvigorate the U.S.-Armenia Council on Trade and Investment, calling it an economic priority for the two countries. Quote, This platform is ideal for discussing key trade topics related to customs, intellectual property rights, non-tariff trade barriers, and government procurement, Kavin said, adding, Working with the Armenian government, I hope to revive this platform, which has slowed in recent years. Speaking at the American Chamber of Commerce in Armenia's annual general meeting, Kavin also name-checked the Armenian government's decision last month to greenlight operations at the Almosar gold mine, saying she welcomed the move. Quote, we were pleased to see the recent Memorandum of Understanding signing between the government and Lydian, and we hope to see operations start soon, Kavin said. Lydian, the company with the rights to operate the mine, is ultimately owned by firms in the United States and Canada. Turning to the issue of U.S. sanctions against Russia and Iran, Kavin said that, quote, the U.S. government recognizes and appreciates Armenia's efforts in respecting the international community sanctions targeting Russia and Iran. She added that Washington plans to dispatch a number of envoys to the region in the coming months to discuss compliance with U.S. export control regulations. Later that day, the Commerce Department announced it would send a delegation next week to Turkey, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia for high-level talks. Earlier this month, the Commerce, Justice, and Treasury Departments specifically named Armenia as one of several, quote, transshipment points commonly used to illegally redirect restricted items to Russia or Belarus, in a joint compliance note on Russia's sanctions-busting efforts. <laughs> 